Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back to Youth Hour. We were talking about generational gap. Um, feel free to call us. We are live. And I'm going to go straight back to Cameron. How are you? Sorry, um, I couldn't go back to you. We had a break. Tell me about um, Hong Kong. Uh, I want to do ask you before the break, actually. The style of education, it's, it's really, really flourishing. And we all want to know what they teach. Oh, I'm glad you think it's flourishing. Uh, I think it's because the parents really drum into the, the children that education is very important. You need to go to a good school, um, go to uni and get a, a very good job. So uh, over here we start primary school around four years old and over there they start around seven. But before they start primary school they go to kindergarten. So that's where they start learning things. They even do homeschooling. So they go to primary school and secondary school like us as well. But what's interesting is that after school, they have to go to tuition school as well. So it's like private school that they go to. And when it's summer holidays, they go to tuition school as well. So it's not really a break for them. They don't really have school holidays. Is that for everyone or somebody has money? Most people, yeah, it's, it's very popular now. So you don't have to be rich to go to, to have um, extra tuition or to go to tuition schools. So if, say, imagine in, in this country, you go nine o'clock and you, you finish about 3.45, something yeah. like that. Yeah. How is it in Hong Kong? Um, it's similar, and then depending on if they get a private tutor or what time their tuition school is, then they go after that. So they might get home around 6 o'clock. How do they discipline the naughty boys or girls? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think what Ben was saying about they are very straight. The parents are straight, the teachers are straight. You don't hit children anymore like back no in the anymore, old days. Yeah, I'm sure everybody was saying yeah. Yeah but um, there's a very there's a lot of respect for the teachers so if you say something bad that might make you stand up and it's very shameful to be told off by the teacher but I know sometimes over here um, the kids might mess around and they get told off but over there it's not tolerated and back in in the olden times when my mum was in school you had to have an exam to get to the next year so if you're in year six you have an exam to go to year seven and if you don't pass the exam, then you stay in that year. And again, that's very, very shameful. It's is, very is, dishonorable. It's very Asian style, same in Bangladesh, isn't it? If you can't pass, you don't move, man. You stay where yeah. you are, as <laughs> long as you like. It, it's not an it's not issue. It is, yeah. It? I think it's, it, we don't have that in, in the UK, I don't think. But I think no. some students do get held back in the same year. But Maybe in extreme circumstances, yeah, yeah but it's yeah. not a regular thing yeah. at all. Not as, yeah, as common, probably, yeah. Ben, um, you know we're talking about a lot of issues um, regarding the gap. So how do you how do we get them together? What would you f what would you do? Well, start of communication definitely. That, that's how you solve most problems between people. Just open up a dialogue and speak about the things that they feel a bit like they're being left out or if they're being disrespected. I mean. Any any new idea comes into your hand? Like we know we don't have any. Uh, pop culture anymore, or like everyone goes together, or they'll probably go to McDonald's now, but it's changed now. So, um, what do you think we could do? It comes into your head. Well, I'm seeing more grandparents join Facebook. Uh, I don't know if that's sort of a good thing or a bad thing yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> you do that now? Uh, yeah, my, my name's on cool, Facebook. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's nice because, like, you know, the family share the pictures and that, you get to see what everyone's going on. But on the flip side, we're, we're sort of seeing each other less. So, I mean, maybe organise an event for the family on Facebook and, and actually get together. And not just for a birthday or, you know, for like Christmas or, or the holidays, just for the sake of it when you're free. That's interesting. Do you have a family group like in the Facebook? Like, uh, or is it like a wider? We've got a little WhatsApp group. My, my, okay. Yeah. My, my mum, dad, brother, sister, um, just uh, so you know everyone's okay and what's going on like even though we're all spread apart now we were all living in the same house but my brother's up at university and my sister's moving in her own place like just on the outside of london but we're all sort of able to contact each other that's great who, who's the who's the most one who writes a lot who's the man i think makes it click my sister most of the time but if my dad has someone to take the mick out of, then it's usually my dad there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he deserves that though, no, no, definitely, definitely, <laughs> connecting everybody. Um, so about what can we do to bring those differences we mm. have? They're not differences, they're just like you're standing somewhere and, and you're trying <coughs> to do your best and we are standing somewhere, we're trying to do our best, so there's a gift here. 
Yeah, no, so how do we bring things together, you think? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to what Ben said. I think, obviously, start off with communication. Uh, there's plenty of things you can do, uh, like, you know, in terms of community events or family get-togethers. Um, I think the most important thing is to sort of, and I know it's hard, but you need to sort of get rid of this preconceived idea that, oh, he's old, he won't understand mm, what that's I'm going good. through. That's a good idea. Yeah, just get rid of this preconception and just go in there neutrally, sit down, and just have a conversation about, you know, everyday life, you know? And you will see, you will find out pretty quickly that but you have a lot yeah, of Yeah, but sometimes what happens is, like, there are young people in your living room, yeah. and a person like mine, all the all friends are there, so we're just talking to each other a lot. Mm. So they're not included. Somehow they feel isolated. They feel, oh, yeah. what are they talking about, man? Yeah. Actually, the things we talk about, my age group, the younger people, they're not linked up. Yeah. So we need to be careful. It's now it's our fault. Yeah. It's not yeah. the kids. It's our fault. They're not engaged in with, with the same thing yeah. or things we say. You know, yeah. these guys nowadays, oh, what's up, bro? And all right, cool. And, and <laughs> we don't even say, we think this, these are unrespectable. Or we think, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. You're a naughty boy. Is that the case? No, it's not. It's just normal words they use in their yeah. schools. And it's cool. We got. We can't say this bad. They're not mm. bad. That's how they talk. Yeah, no, it, it is. Um, like we do, kitawa. What's that kitawa? You yeah. know, to them, what's yeah. that kitawa? Yeah, you know? it's, it's for in their eyes, it seems like a, sort of an aggressive way of speaking and, and not as sort of, how do I put it, um, precise and sort of, you know, clear. But, um, yeah, I think it's, it's difficult. Um, it, it works both ways. I think our generation and the generation that will come after us, they also have to make a concerted effort. You know, just as much as the older generation in trying to understand each other. Some people just give up and they're like, oh, I'll never understand it. And, and you know, just, they'll just carry on as they are. Um, but, you know, I think in, in order for us to have unity and sort of, you know, come together, you have to make that effort um, to sort of understand, sit down and just have a dialogue and communicate. Uh, it, it, you don't even need to sit down. You can just go and do a social activity and you'll find that pretty soon you're engaging and sort of agreeing with, with each other, you know, on, on common grounds. Um, yeah, yeah, before I come to you, there's, there's issues here. If they're not connecting with you, mm. the parents and everybody else in the family, there are a lot of young people into drugs, into gangs, into knife crime, everything, why they isolated themselves. They, they're not finding home home anymore. They're going out and finding you know, whatever they want to do. So it's so important bringing everyone in, in the same terms. So what would you do to bringing everyone in the same table or... Something like that. I think that being a younger generation, we kind of expect the older generation to catch up with us, but maybe we need to be more like them. Mm. It's not making them change, it's us changing, maybe. So, for example, maybe it's not me teaching my grandma how to use the microwave, it's me learning how to cook like her. Mm, that's mm. interesting. Yeah. That is so good, actually, <laughs> yeah. You have to come on both <laughs> sides, honestly. Yeah. yeah, it's a give and take. But then you learn, you know. She teaches her grandma how to use a microwave and her grandma teaches her how to cook. And you're both benefiting, you know. Um, Do you ever, did you ever feel like you're in the living room and their elders are talking and you felt, oh my God, uh, what are they talking about? <laughs> did you ever feel like that? Yes, I do. And sometimes I don't really understand the things that they argue about. Uh, for example, my cousin was getting married and my grandma was upset that he didn't ask for her blessing. And to my cousin, I was like, why do I need to ask for your blessing? It's me that's getting married. But in that generation, it mm. is the elders that give the blessing and they say yes or no to the marriage. I think we have the same, exactly. Mm. We have yeah. the same thing, actually. Um, most of the time, I, I, when I go to some places, when they talk to each other, you know, I just feel left out. And when you feel left out for at least for 10, 15 minutes, you want to you wanna leave that place, man. <laughs> Isn't that's how you feel? <laughs> if I feel like that, imagine the younger people. It is awkward. I've been. I've Imagine the younger yeah, people. Like, I'm sure if it's. I'm sure it probably might be the same for you guys. You, you're around your parents and they're talking to their elder brother or older sister. They're having an adult conversation and they're talking in a very particular way, and you you might not understand it. You're already losing interest. You're not like thinking. You know, I don't know what they're. Do talking. you understand the language? Yeah, I understand it. Yeah, I've, I've been I've been in the living room when no, I. No, word for word, but I'm sure. Yeah, m most of it. Yeah, I understand what they say. Okay. So I've been in the living room when I heard my dad talk to my uncles and stuff and. You know, I never really took any interest um, because the stuff that they were talking about, you know, as nothing a kid, with you. It's, it's got nothing to do with me. I was more interested in video games and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but when we talk about stuff, they will look at it and they will probably think, what are they talking about? I think for them, it's a bit more embarrassing. They might come from a point of view where, okay, I'm not going to interfere with what they're talking about. They do, they're talking about kids stuff, you know, why should I be interested? 
but you know they might you know, I might learn something from yeah. what they're talking about and they might learn something from what we're talking about and I think we just need to sort of get past that this 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 idea that oh you know um, because you're a certain age from yeah. a certain generation uh, I'm not going to engage because uh, it's embarrassing for me or uh, I'm you know I'm not going to understand it so I think it's just kind of like just look just put that aside and you'll yeah. be surprised imagine you imagine you you're not married you're going to plan your marriage right mm. so you've got um, your elders around yeah and if if you think like look they won't know anything about this marriage because they've been they they not into that level yet mm. <laughs> a past that level so if you leave them out, hmm. imagine how they're going to feel. Oh, they won't be happy about it, that's for sure. Um, they might not say anything to you, but yeah, no, within they, themselves. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how, it's quite the same reaction from both yeah, sides, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's the yeah. same reaction. So that's so important to acknowledge people around you mm. and engage with them. Otherwise, they feel yeah. left out and isolated and s suicidal, man. It happens. Yeah, no, it's, and the bullying, all that stuff. Oh, uh, Ben! Ben likes talking about bullying. Ben, tell me about bullying, man. What's happening, man? <laughs> bullying. Yes, at the. Okay, Cyber we got somebody bullying. in the line. Hold on, just got somebody yeah. in the line. Okay. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Brother, your name and where you calling from, please. Um, my name is Ibrahim Rahman. I'm calling from Cambridge. Oh, mashallah, we blessed Ibrahim by you called us. Yes, talk to Shuhail is much better. He's much closer I than me. I know Ibrahim. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Ibrahim? You're right. I bet you're laughing. Yeah, it's not like How are you? you okay? salam, man. I'm, too, I'm not too bad, man. How are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, very well. Um, it's really, I, I'm really pleased to see you guys all talking about something which I think is a really important topic. So mm. that's why I was quite interested in tuning in. Not because you were on it, and I know you think that, <laughs> but also because um, <laughs> it was really interesting to hear about what you guys have to say. And, uh, and I just want to kind of just share very briefly, you know, what my kind of thoughts are on it as well. Because I feel that, um, you know, the things that you talked about, particularly from a British Bangladeshi perspective, um, you know, looking at how the older generations and, you know, how they had to uh, deal with things. Um, but, you know, I think it's like with my experience, mine was very different because um, with my mum, for example, you know, she was born and raised in Cambridge as well. She grew up in the UK along with her brothers, her older brothers. So, um, you know, I felt that w with me growing up in the UK as well, I could relate to my mum and her side of the family a lot easier because they've kind of been been there and done that. So that's a very different perspective from that perspective, from that from that angle really. But um, with but with my dad's side, because he came to came from Bangladesh um, back in 1991, just after my mum got married. So his sort of upbringing was very different. So you can see the two different sort of culture clashes in that sense. You know, it's amazing to um, if anybody to call me and ask, I think you and your mother and that family is all close. I mean, that's I did make a lot of comments about you guys. It's amazing to see mm. how they blend in, you know, parents and the son together. It's it's, it's amazing. Mm. He's, he's quite, they're quite unique. Yeah. And if your mom, they please give us salam and you know um, tell her to call us if she wants <coughs> to. Yeah. You, you'll be you know worthwhile talking to her. She's amazing. Inshallah. But when I keep up with the good work, you're doing really well. So thank, thank you, sir. Thanks for your calls. You know, you're fantastic to hear from him. I mean, yeah. he, him and his mother so so close, and they mm. writers and they in the media. They do mm. amazing stuff, yeah. honestly. And um, you know, I always have time for these guys. But he calls you when you only when you're here. <laughs> so yes. he did call <laughs> for me. To, yeah, seems to. <laughs> whenever I'm on, I'm on the show, he is no, no, quite that is fantastic. <laughs> ben told me uh, there there are a lot of things happening in our young people's life. I mean, they're being bullied. It's, it's gone high. And there's yeah. some uh, recent death happened. People killed themselves because of bullying. Yeah, uh, largely the source. Is it because they're isolated? Is it because they're not loved at home? Is it because someone not listening to them at home? You know, there's a big thing. What do you think? I think the social pressure from things, uh, social media, for example, they're under a lot more scrutiny. They're basically in front of a camera 24 hours a day. Like everything they write is recorded forever. It's it's a lot of pressure and. I mean, it's hard for them to talk to their parents about it because they might not necessarily understand how far, like, a Facebook status or a tweet could go and, like, how they could potentially become, you know, a joke on the internet just because of some silly thing they commented or some silly picture they took. And I think, you know, parents should really be able to talk to their kids about it more. So I think, you know, kids should talk to their parents more, get them un understand what's going on, not, th not this, oh, you wouldn't understand. Oh, just, you know let them know it's like this is what's going on it's like even if they don't understand necessarily how the technology works just the implications of it and like what could possibly happen who would you who would you say to take the first step say it's happening now right who would you ask the 
parents or the, or the young people who take the first step to break the ice? Uh, it depends on the situation because, I mean, if before it happens, I think, you know, maybe the parents should just, just say something to know. It's like, I'm here if you want to talk to me mm. about it. It's like, even if you don't think I'll understand. I'm, I'm because a young yes. person, definitely, he's been bullied and all that stuff. He don't want to show, he don't want to say I'm, I've been bullied or I've been beaten and stuff like that. Yeah. So you, you have to know what he's going through. You know, it, it's, it's your it's parents' duty to know, actually. It's, it's them. They should take the first step. You yeah. take the first step. It's your kid, man. I mean, yeah. you can tell he's not happy. You can tell he's not having food. You can tell he's, just, you know, isolated. And if you know, you know, if you can't make fair and if you can get him to say something, that is... That is a failure, man. I really, really think so. It's it's difficult though because I mean, they they feel ashamed of it as well, which that's one of the side effects of bullying. You feel ashamed, like you know, I I'm, I deserve this because I'm. It's it's not right that they think that, but that, that's how that's the court that what it causes, and so you have to reach out, just sort of be more aware of what's going on. Even, uh, even if it is sort of social media stuff or it is like traditional bullying. Have you ever been bullied in school? Have you ever? Yeah, yeah. I was I a big kid with glasses. I, I definitely got bullied. Yeah. <laughs> how did you deal with it? I mean, now you know. I mean, how to do it? Maybe then, when you're young, you can't deal with it. But now you know. If I'd done that, it would have been good. If I'd done this, it would have been happened to me. What would you do different now? Um, I would ignore a lot of it because I mean, a lot of it was just things that were said over and over by, you know, boneheaded kids that mm. didn't have much else to offer the world and you know their opinion doesn't mean anything to it me doesn't. it's like these people they're going to grow up to be horrible people why do i care what their opinion of me is but i mean then i thought they were representative of my peers and they really weren't that's true um have you ever uh, faced or have you ever seen anyone you know really harmed by being bullied and they isolated themselves and have you ever seen anyone like that i'm not seen anyone but uh, my brother was bullied when he was younger. I think some of it was still racism as well because we were the only Chinese people in North London. So he was physically bullied and verbally as well. And he, my mum had to sort it out really. So I'd say to people that being bullied, it's not a thing to be ashamed of really. And when you, when you become an adult, you realise that you deserve respect. But when you're okay. a child, you don't know that. Yeah, I think you see it happens to everyone. Even racism and bullying, it's not about your colour or, or country. It, it happens. If someone bullies you, bullies because of who you are, actually. So we got that from all sides. You know, it, it, it happens. Um, if I ask you, um, how would we know if someone been bullied? Am Is I there certain signs like that person will... Yeah. The way he eats, the way he talks, the way he doesn't want to engage. I mean, is there any sign? I think there are cues. If you know someone well, that you can see that they're being withdrawn. That's really the main thing. And what was interesting was my, when my brother was being bullied. I didn't know I was young at that time, but he was, and then he started bullying me. Because so he's he was reacting being with you. Okay. Yeah. He's trying to find another way to bring it out. Yes. Yeah. But I think it happens, you know, in, in the family, you got older one and you pick on the younger one. Mm. Da, 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 da. It's a normal thing. I've got three boys, you know, <laughs> and oh my God, when they start shouting, all that stuff, <laughs> it happens. Um, they recently, actually, the, he, he, one of the young boys in, in Kent, and he killed himself. He's a young boy, actually, just because of bullying and all that stuff. And it's not going down, it's almost like going up. Um, as a parent, you know, there's a lot of things we have to worry about. You know, recent years it was gangs and drugs and all that stuff. So we have to be very worried. If you're not connected with your kids, you can't go beyond control and sometimes it's too late. So we were talking about, you know, how we're connecting them together. What would you be your idea to bringing um, those generations together? What would it be your... I think I'm just picking up on, on cues. So, for example, the older generation can see what interests the younger generation, what bothers them really. In the same way, young people could see what older people like and what bothers them too. It works both ways. You can't just expect one side to bend to the other side. Tell me about food, man. Do you, do you know the old food and new food? Is there any differences? You know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll catch in this one because I know a lot of food we like and the older don't like it. Like, I'm sure you don't like shutki, right? <laughs> the smell of it, okay. Uh, I love yeah, it. The taste is fantastic. The and right there are right. some other stuff like... Um, 
I love it. I can't have it because bones. Like, I, mm. I love Elish. Elish mash mm. is fantastic. Mm. Chital mash is fantastic. I can't have it because it's so many, it's so bony. Yeah. It's difficult to be. Yeah. But our parents, they love their own food. Mm. But our food, they don't like it. Like fish and chips mm. or pizza yeah. or pasta, <laughs> or you name it. You know, how do we interact with food then? What, do, what would it be your idea? Food is a good way to break the ice, I guess. It <laughs> does, it does, honestly, uh, it does. Especially to break the awkwardness. Um, I don't know, I guess it depends. Um, you know, my, my parents, you know, do they, have they had English food? My mom has, in, you know, she's had fish and chips before. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, eating rice and curry at home. I don't have it as much now, but um, yeah, I think, to be honest, I don't think there is any barriers with food. I think it's just, you know, once you taste it and you, you, you take a but liking to it. But sometimes a lot of young people actually, they don't, they don't want those food. I yeah, can see with my kids, but yeah. if somehow we are forcing them, not even good yeah, at You know, yeah. like, forcing them, then actually you'll be a, a big yeah. issue. We well, need to find a way. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think it will, you, you, you know, you, you said it right there, you know. Um, you can't force, you know, someone to eat a particular thing or Force like me in really an emotional way. Oh, you yeah. don't have that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For yeah. You, man. They no, use emotional man. blackmail and they say <laughs> that, you know. Thank um, you, mommy, but you know, I'm I upset. Like you. I made you food and you're not having it. And I'm like, okay, I'm having it. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. That's and then you're like, you know, not really. But um, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where just give them the, give them the freedom to try it. And if they don't want to try it, they don't, they don't have to. Um, but I think, I think it's a bit, it's, you, it's, it's that balance, you know, where if you if, if you sort of emotionally tell them that, oh, if you don't have it because I made an appointment and every effort into it, and then they sort of have it and they don't like it, that's going to stay with them and they're going to be put yeah. off completely. Yeah, it would yeah. be, it would be. Yeah. And a lot of people have ha happened to them as yeah. well. But with food, I don't know, it's kind of like, I, I see it as universal. It's kind of like, if you come from a perspective of, oh, I want to try this or I want to try that, then obviously with food, it's kind of like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But you have to have that choice. So it comes back to choice. But have you noticed the food has changed in our tables now? Yeah, it? it has, it's yeah. It's so much changed now. It you has, get, yeah, you get definitely. You get tandoori's, you get kebabs, you mm. get pizza, you get this, you get that. It's, Very it's mixed. quite amazing, a lot of things coming yeah. into it. You get Turkish food, you get Bengali food, and other mm. foods come together. It's different flavor it's now. diversity, yeah. So it's, uh, it's good it's in a sense. Yeah. We live in a world that is quite small nowadays. Ben, are you into food, man? Oh, yeah, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say, okay. So do you have a struggle with the, with the older generation? Like, they have a choice of food, you have a choice of food, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't come up too much because, you know, I'm, I'm happy to try everything because mm. I'm being brought up in London. I've had everything from, from Mexican food, Thai food, every, everything you got Spicy here, really. Food? I've still not got around to trying, like, jellied eels, you know, which is a traditional London dish. Mm. But, I mean, I'm... I'm not trying it one day, but I, I don't know if I'll buy a whole plate yet, I, or a whole bowl because I don't know if I'll like it yet, but I'm, I'm going pie mash Were you ever so. forced into blackmail, you know, say, listen, if you don't do that, I'm not going to give you these. Have you ever been into that position yourself? I've, I've had a bit of the sort of passive aggressive, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> would, you, would you do the same for someone else? Like you made something and say, Dad, you've got to have it, man. I did this, <laughs> I done that, and you bring all the stories like they do. Would you do it? I think they're more worried I'll poison them because my cooking is so bad. But <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, uh, it's sort of like, people, people realise that you, you're cooking for them, like, I mean, it's coming from a younger generation to older generation, but they sort of realise it a lot more because, you know, it doesn't happen as much these days. do you cook? Are you a good cook? I, I'm not a good cook. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, I made a stir fry recently and it actually tastes nice. That's, that's my achievement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it took me 10 minutes. That's fantastic. But I mean, I like it to take for granted because they get cooked for every day. Oh. So who cooks for you then? My mum, mostly, and my dad. And uh, my nan's cooked a fair few meals as well. But I'm, I'm trying to pitch in more. I think you'll be very interested if you get into it. You'll see how, how long it takes, man, honestly. I'm a good cook. I cook at home as well. <laughs> I do, honestly. We've got um, a minute to for a break, then we come back. Um, do you cook? Oh, I do. I do. I, I'm more interested with Do the you enjoy cooking? I do, I do. But not the actual food itself. It's the association, like what Ben was saying. You're cooking for someone. It's the love. So I think it's about positive associations with food. I, I find out that my grandma, she loves Pizza Hut. But then I realised it's because we eat it together as a family. Ah. We go out. It's, it's not amazing. See yeah. what I mean? Mm. 
I mean, she took another power, step yeah. to bring everyone together. Well, she might not even enjoy that much like you would, we and I would, but I think we all need to break that. You know, we, we all mm. need to make a little, little steps to make a, a bond and strong family. And we're going to go for a small break. Dear viewers, we're going to go for a small break again, and inshallah, see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, <laughs> oh,